Hi, I'm Sanjib Majumna. I'm a plastic surgery consultant and for this medicine in a nutshell talk, I thought we'd discuss breast implants. Now, breast enlargement is by far the most common cosmetic procedure performed in the Western world. And I thought it'd be a good idea to go through the, the variety of breast implants that are available. Now, if we look at the breast implants that are used in the United Kingdom, the vast majority, 90 plus percent, are a silicone shell with silicone gel on the inside. There are some ladies who do have the implants where the filling is not silicone but is made of soya bean oil and which they call trilucent implants. Uh, this was shown to have some problems and most of them have been taken out so I suspect there are a few ladies who still walk around with those. In the UK we don't use saline implants a lot for cosmetic purposes but in the United States saline implants are still widely used because from the 90s for a period of time silicone implants were banned and we'll have a little chat about that near the end. Now all silicone implants that we use in the UK are essentially as I said a silicone shell with silicone gel inside but there are uh, varieties. This one we have is a smooth shell implant meaning the, sh the, the surface is nice and smooth and intuitively you think wow this is the best thing looks smooth it's the best thing. However with the silicone shell we're being smooth there's about a 40 percent chance of something called capsular contracture and to reduce that and we'll discuss capsular contracture momentarily there are two types of innovations one is the texturing and the other is to coat the silicone um, shell with something called polyurethane so what is actually capsular contracture now when you put a um, breast implant into a patient it's a foreign body much like you put a hip implant or a heart valve implant and in all these cases the foreign body is looked upon by the uh, our bodies as something we want to get rid of or at least not be aware of so from an immunological point of view the body wants to be unaware of it and to hide it the body puts a capsule around it and the capsule sits on this implant quite happily excluding it and hiding it away from the body's immune defenses but in certain individuals, in certain times, you find that the capsule starts to contract, much like my hand is doing on the implant. And the result is very much like what you're seeing on the implant. Essentially, the implant becomes deformed, which can cause the patient a visible uh, or palpable deformity or pain, or in certain extreme instances, it can even rupture. The same happens if you've got a hip implant or a heart valve implant, but those are solid structures while this is a semi-solid and as such the solid structures aren't affected by it. With the smooth implant, the incidence of capsular contracture is in the vicinity of 40%. So we don't use those for cosmetic purposes in this country. With the textured, it, the risk has gone down to between 5 to 8% and with the polyurethane possibly somewhat lower. So the vast majority of breast implants for cosmetic purposes are silicone with silicone gel with a texture or a polyurethane coating. Now these two implants we have are what we call round implants meaning that they're hemispherical and many people use these if it's suitable for the patient. But other pa um, surgeons like to use what is known as an anatomical implant and if you compare the round to the anatomical especially in a side view it's got this what is known as a teardrop shape and this teardrop shape gives one the, the a better sort of breast shape a better natural shape it is thought so and if you're putting this implant under the breast tissue the teardrop shape probably will give you the best um, outcome but that's very very dependent on the patient and the surgeon and what they're trying to achieve in terms of the aesthetic outcome. Now, you have a wide variety of sizes. So this one here, let's move these two along, is a 165 gram implant, which is teardrop shape with a polyurethane. That's quite small. And then you've got this one, 
which is 700 grams. So a wide variety of sizes and the size that is chosen depends very much on what the patient wants in terms of the eventual outcome in terms of the size of breast they want to have. So we have different sizes, we have different texture or coating and then you have different shapes. Now, interestingly, when you're putting in an anatomical implant as opposed to a round implant, which you can put in any way and it can spin around, it's not a problem. You don't want to put an anatomical implant upside down because that's obviously will not give you the kind of aesthetic outcome you want. And to help the surgeon, because when you put the implant in under the breast, you can't see exactly where the, the orientation, these anatomical implants have these little buttons on them so you can feel them to know, yep, that lines up inferiorly. Or in these, uh, one with a polyurethane, you've got a little firm line and then again that also helps you to, to line them up. Now, the, the, the next thing about the um, implants is that if you look at this implant versus that implant, you see that there's a difference in the bases of the implants, i.e. this is much wider than this and this is a bit flatter than that. So one has to choose an implant that is bespoke for the patient. So you have to measure the patient's breast base and not choose one that is too big or too small. And also you looked at what you call the projection. So you've got to make sure that the height is the one you want. So they have different varieties of base sizes versus projection. And then you also have for the anatomical ones, you've got to look at the projection at the lower pole as opposed to how much projection you have the upper pole. So there's a wide variety of gain of uh, things to choose from. The final thing you've got to look at is the cohesiveness of the gel. The gel itself, which is I can't as obviously demonstrate on the, the video, comes in different levels of cohesiveness. So this is a bit firmer, that's quite firm, while this implant, obviously we won't be using this cosmetically, is quite squidgy, right? So one can look at the different cohesiveness because the, the firmer the implant is, the less rippling you'll get, but it may feel less natural. So in essence, there is a, a wide choice of implants that are available and one needs to assess the patient very carefully, determine what are their aesthetic needs and discuss with the patient the different types and choose with the patient which is the best implant for them.